Okay, hello, my name is Yasunas, and I will present the paper Team Formation Amid Conflicts. This is joint work with my advisor at Boston University, Evi Maria Terzi. So, in Biggest Park, we have an organization uh, named, in Boston University, we have an organization named Biggest Park. They connect students with the industry using real world projects in data science and engineering. So, last year we had people from Biggest Park. Uh, approach, they, they approached us and asked us to automate the procedure of assigning students of large data science classes to industry projects based on their preferences for projects and collaborators. So let's start with a concrete example. Suppose you're, you want to organize a project-based class. So students declare their friends or preferred collaborators as well as their project preferences. This information is captured by the friend graph and the a project preference graph, respectively. For example, here student one is friends with student one is friends with students three, two, and three, and only likes the blue project. Note also that each project has a maximum capacity of students that can accommodate. For example, the blue project can only accommodate a maximum of three students. So now, given this input, the question is how do you assign students to projects? And of course, the goal is to come up with an assignment so that uh, students get their most preferred project, as well as the maximum number of friends possible in their team. So a solution for this example might look like this. So we assign students one, two, and three to the blue project, students four and five to the red project, and finally students six to the green project. Note that this solution satisfies all of the project capacity constraints, and also, we assign each student to exactly one project. So a key idea in our formulation was to, instead of considering the friend edges, consider conflict edges. That is, instead of working with the friend graph, we used the complement of the friend graph, which we named the conflict graph. Here's the complement of the friend graph for this example that we saw in the previous slide. So the objective that we found works best for our problem is to maximize the happiness of students based on the project preferences, basically the projects they got, while at the same time maximize the conflicts across teams. Note that this is equivalent to minimizing the conflicts within the teams. Now, before defining our objective, let's first define uh, binary variables. So we define variables x, v, t for every student v and every project t. Uh, so as we said, x v t equal to 1 if student v is assigned to project t. Otherwise, we set x v t equal to 0. So now let's define our objective. Our objective comprises two terms. The first term is the project satisfaction term, which captures the satisfaction of students based on the projects they got. And the second term is the social satisfaction term, which is equal to the weight of the conflict edges across the teams. We also added a hyperparameter lambda, so as to weight the two terms, depending on the application at hand. An interesting observation for this objective is that the first term alone defines a B-matching problem, while the second term alone defines a max-cut problem. So we can think our problem as a mix between B-matching and max-cut. In what follows, I will denote our objective with f of x. The constraints that our solution should satisf satisfy are the following. So first, each individual must be matched with exactly one project. Uh, each project, our solution should respect the maximum capacity of each project. And finally, the, cons the variable should be binary, either zero or one. Oftentimes, in our algorithms, we make use of the fractional relaxation of this uh, feasible set of solutions, where we replace the last constraint with this one, where we allow uh, our variables to take any value between zero and one. So as you might have guessed, this, uh, this problem is NP-hard. This is because uh, it is a generalization of max cut, which is a, which is a well-known uh, NP-hard problem. Thus our focus is to design good uh, approximate solutions. So our results include the one over two approximation algorithm, which we name PyPads, a three over four approximation algorithm, which works uh, under a balancing assumption on the input, and we call R PyPads, or randomized PyPads, and finally, we developed several heuristics that work well on large graphs. In this presentation, I'm only going to explain the two uh, approximation algorithms. 
So I'm not going into the details of the analysis of each algorithm, but I will give a high level sketch of the ideas involved in uh, the design of both algorithms. So both of them follow this relaxed and round template. We start with the original integral problem and we relax it so that the variables are in the fractional domain and we have replaced the objective uh, function f with L. L is constructed in such a way so that it is easy to optimize it over the fractional domain. The next step is to solve the relaxed problem and obtain a fractional solution, here denoted by y star. And finally, we round this y star to obtain our solution for the initial problem, x int, here is for integral. Note that the last step of rounding our fractional solution of the relaxed problem to get the integral solution, uh, if we use independent rounding, this will not work. This is because the variables of our problem are dependent on each other and they have to satisfy the constraints. This is why we used uh, dependent rounding schemes and in particular we used pi patch rounding and randomized pi patch rounding. So now let me uh, discuss our experimental results. In our paper we have included uh, we have included experiments run on three different data sets but here I will only focus on the education data set which we obtained from Biggest Park. This was our initial uh, motivation to start with. So the education data exactly fits the model I have described so far. So each student ranks the projects from best to worst and we convert the ranking to preferences. And also each student declares their friends or preferred collaborators. Uh, so we obtain access to four different, uh, for to data for corresponding to four different classes, here denoted class A, B, C, and D. Note that all classes have fewer than 40 students, except for class A, which has 168 students. That said, coming up with the assignment of students to project, even for the small classes, is not a trivial task. Of course, if you plan to organize a project-based class next semester, I invite you to use our algorithms and code for team formation. You can find everything on GitHub, and we also have support for more complicated uh, constraints. So the first thing we did is that we evaluated the approximation algorithm of our, uh, of the, the approximation ratio of the algorithm we designed. So the approximation ratio is defined as the ratio between the, object, the value of the objective our algorithm has achieved, here I denoted by alg, divided by the, obje the objective value of the optimal solution. We obtained uh, opt, the value of the, of the objective of the optimal solution, using an off-the-self solver from Gurobi. Here we compare our, lar our two algorithms, this is PyPage and RPyPage, with algorithm random, which randomly assigns, sequentially assigns students to a random project until no student remains. And we also implemented a greedy heuristic, which assigns students sequentially again to their best feasible option. An interesting remark here is that greed is almost optimal for all classes, uh, despite the fact that in theory we have, we have proven, proven this theorem that says that Grady has unbounded approximation ratio in general. Now, although our algorithms perform well in terms of uh, our objective, this is not enough from a practical perspective. Uh, this is why we, dis we collaborated with people from Biggest Park to create intuitive metrics that capture the performance, the quality of our solutions. So we developed these two metrics, the average project rank, which is the average rank of the project each student got uh, based on his or her own ranking of the project, as well as the average number of friends in team, which is, I think, self-explanatory. So these metrics are not directly optimized by our algorithms. However, having good values in these metrics will prove that our objective is actually the right objective to optimize. So here we report the average project rank for our, our algorithms. Here are our two algorithms, which both have an average project rank of 1.81. This is better than uh, manual, where manual is the actual solution used by uh, people from Biggest Park. Uh, and also note that optimal is, of course, better than uh, uh, manual. I also want to mention that running our algorithms requires only a few seconds, while the solution by human experts requires days of human labor. Here I report the average number of friends in team. Uh, note that our algorithms are worse than the manual uh, assignment. However, optimal is again better than the manual assignment. 
this supports the fact that our objective is actually the right objective to optimize. Finally, I want to discuss some uh, future directions that I think are interesting to explore. Uh, first, I think explaining the performance of the grid by analyzing its performance on under specific assumptions on the input might explain why greedy is uh, so successful in our real-world data. We actually conjecture that under specific assumptions on the input, um, greedy has a bounded competitive ratio, uh, approximation ratio, I'm sorry. Uh, a second direction will be to speed up uh, pi batch rounding. So this is the main bottleneck in the running time of our algorithms. Uh, and I think speeding, speeding up will be very useful if you want to run our algorithms on large graphs. Finally, for the last two points, fairness and the online version of the problem, uh, we have already started working on, a, on an online version of the problem where you have to repeatedly uh, solve the instances of our original problem, while at the same time enforcing some notion of long-term fairness. Uh, that's all I had. I'm happy to answer any questions.